right, so I just filmed a 40 minute vlog that was going to be my nine months update from getting my schizoid diagnosis, but I made the mistake of using OBS and it completely destroyed the sound. Like there's parts of it where there's no sound at all and then parts where there's a popcorning kind of sound in the background and it's just unusable, which is a shame. So I'll try and do that update maybe on Thursday when I have the place to myself again. Um, in the meantime, because I don't know how much time I have left, I'll just talk about like the craziest thing I guess that's happened to me in terms of therapy um because I have a bunch of issues and I'll talk about this more in the update um but one of the issues that my psychologist reckons she doesn't really have the expertise to look at is dissociation um now when I say dissociation there's a few different things that fall under that umbrella you know I've had issues with depersonalization derealization but I also have some identity issues or sense of self issues um which we think might fall under the dissociation I mean, she, I guess that's what she's decided based on reading my notes as I, like, you know, document what I'm going through for her. Um, yeah, like, you know, we've sort of explored whether or not it's tied into schizoid somehow, because schizoid is sort of on the mild end of the schizophrenia spectrum. Um, so I guess, like, it's possible that it's tied into, like, some mild psychosis type experience um but there's not really evidence for that and the way that it is in my head like the experiences i have are a little bit too logical i guess to really fit psychosis like i don't know a huge amount about psychosis so it's still possible that it's tied into that but yeah it doesn't seem to be that so we're calling it dissociation um, and I guess if you go by technical definitions, like I do have a disconnect in my sense of self, and that's actually another video I still haven't got around to making is the three different ways that my sense of self is messed up. Um, but yeah, so, um, she wants me to see a dissociation specialist and there's other reasons that, you know, I need to think about what I'm going to do with my therapy. Um, but I can't remember what I said in this video already. Okay, yeah, sorry, um, because I made that 40 minute video, I'm a bit confused about what I've already talked about, so please bear with me. But yeah, so, um, my psychologist wants me to see a dissociation specialist because of all the things that I'm going through, that's the one she seems least confident about helping me with, um, and I think sometimes she's worried that she'll say the wrong thing or, you know, do the wrong thing. So yeah, she wants me to see a dissociation specialist, sent me some, sent me an email with some links to, like, people she's recommending that I should, you know, find out whether they're taking patients, how long their waiting list is, and, you know, figure things out from there. But I was looking at them last night, and what makes me really anxious is, um, like, I had assumed they were just general dissociation specialists, but the ones that actually list what they're into, um, they're particularly interested in dissociative identity disorder. So I'm essentially, she's telling me to see a dissociative identity disorder specialist. And like, I don't have DID, okay, let's get that out of the way before we get too excited. Um, I just have some experiences, I guess, that are similar, and I'm struggling to understand, like, what do I do with that? How do I interpret it? Um, yeah, I, there's a lot of confusion. And, um, you know, I, I'll go into detail later at some point. Uh, I'm just, yeah, running out of time, don't know what to... Ah, anyway, so I've just been a bit like, holy shit, she wants me to see a DID specialist. Do I want to do it? Um, I haven't been able to bring myself to send off any emails yet. Just because, like, you know, maybe they'll be helpful because they have some insight into that aspect of how the brain works. But on the other hand, if they are specialists in that field, then that diagnosis is going to color everything that they come across. So if I come along saying I have these mild symptoms that are similar to DID, then they're going to look at it as if it is related to DID, right? Because like, you know, if you a specialist in something, it colors your vision. And I'm just not sure that I want that or that I'm ready for it or I mean, maybe I'm in denial. Maybe that is what I need to like, you know, figure out what's going on in my head and the way that I experience the world and the way that I experience myself. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure that I want to do it. And so that's, that's like the main thing that I'm thinking about right now. The, the, the issue that I need to sort out is do I want to, I suppose I should just send the emails anyway and just find out cause like I don't have to go, but yeah. So, um, and oh, there's too much to say and not enough time to say it in, but that's, that's a thing, and I've just lost my train of thought. Give me another moment. 
No, actually, I think I was done, <laughs> really. Um, the, the only other thing that I want to say that kind of amused me is, like, if I'm going to be seeing a DID specialist, if, if, I haven't decided yet, but if it happens, like, one of the things it makes me think of is when I put out my first schizoid personality disorder video and a few ones after that, I was getting some comments from people saying that I was faking SPD or... I don't, some people want to call it SZPD because it's sensory processing disorder now, which as far as I know isn't actually in a diagnostic manual, but they're taking over SPD anyway, so SZPD, but schizotypal also has a Z in it, so the, adding the Z doesn't really help clarify. Anyway, anyway, I'm nitpicking. <laughs> um... I'll just call it schizoid. So there, there was some, when I put out those schizoid videos, there were some people coming around saying I'm faking being schizoid for views, which I just think is like of all the reasons that you could doubt my diagnosis, that one is the craziest one to me because schizoids, schizoid personality disorder is not a dramatic disorder and it's not a disruptive one. One of the reasons it doesn't get much research is because we're not causing that much trouble. We kind of just keep to ourselves, keep quiet. We're more likely to disrupt ourselves just from being depressed or whatever than we are to disrupt others. I mean, maybe the most we'll do to upset others is just not participate when people want us to be social or whatever. Um, yeah, no, like, whereas there are much more disruptive and dramatic disorders like borderline personality disorder it's basically the opposite of schizoid instead of, instead of feeling like basically nothing they feel too much and don't know how to control it and you know sometimes they'll be great but sometimes they'll lash out and it's very dramatic because it's out there and it's social and it gets into people's lives and so there's plenty of research about it um you know all kinds of stuff in society for it um but you know schizoids it's the opposite. You keep to yourself. You don't feel too much. You don't make any real dramatic moves that much. Um, in general, anyway. Uh, there's always exceptions. But, like, by comparison, there's less research done on schizoid. It's not that interesting. I mean, it's so, it's so unknown as well that um, I think, you know, with society's push to better look at autism. I think there are some people out there who probably think they have autism but actually have schizoid just because they've never heard of schizoid. It doesn't get publicity. It's not a popular thing. Um, yeah, it's just not something that society's interested in and it's not dramatic. And so I find it weird that people think I would be faking schizoid <laughs> for YouTube views because um, I don't know, like I didn't even know there was a market for schizoid for one thing. But of all the things that you could fake, why would you fake such a low key disorder? It's just seems odd to me. Whereas, um, you know, if you really wanted to play the YouTube game, I think dissociative identity disorder is the big dramatic one. I know there's a whole community around it. And actually, that's something I'm a bit nervous about is if I started, if I did see a DID specialist and, you know, I talk about my life, so obviously I would start talking about it. Um, and I don't know that I want to attract that crowd because from what I know of the DID community, there's a lot of drama and I don't know that I want that. So that's another thing to be a little bit like, do I really want to bring this into my life? Like, even if it's like, I don't have DID, it's just a DID adjacent issues. Um, but yeah, like what is a DID specialist going to think about it? That could actually be kind of interesting, but do I want to attract that son of a crowd? I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, it's kind of funny to have that, like have my psychologist suggest I go see one of these people because yeah, if I was going to fake a disorder um, for YouTube views, wouldn't you pick something like DID and not schizoid? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's just sort of an, in, like, you know, another thought that it made me have. And do I want that sort of attention? Um, I could just not talk about it, but you know, YouTube's my hobby and it's sort of my release and I want to talk about the things that are going on in my head, especially because I'm not using Facebook so much. Um, you know, sometimes I write stuff on Patreon instead because, like, I like having that paywall as, like, one extra barrier. So, like, it's kind of public, but it's not too public. Um, and it's not, you know, like, my family aren't on it, whereas they are on Facebook. So there's some stuff that I can say on Patreon more easily than I could say elsewhere. Um... Anyway, anyway, yeah, like, I don't know that I would be able to not talk about my life on YouTube. Like, there's a lot that I don't share on YouTube, but if that was a major thing I was going through, I think I would talk about it. So, yeah, uh, if I take that route, I kind of risk that sort of attention, which I'm not too 
I don't know how I feel about it. It's been a while since I checked in on the DID community. I know there was like a few years back there was a huge thing going on and do I want to touch it? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's just a thing that's going on. That's the most most recent thing and most pressing thing that I'm like sitting around feeling anxious about is, I mean, I guess I should just send the emails. I, I should just sit down, send the emails, find out what their waiting list is like. Um, probably a lot of them will not be taking people anyway. And then I can go back to my psychologist and be like, hey, so no one had spaces and I'm super anxious about it. <laughs> what other things can I do in the meantime? Um, but yeah, no, I think on Thursday I'll make, I'll try and make the nine months since schizoid diagnosis update um, and go into a bit more detail about some of the things that we've talked about and uh, yeah, any other thoughts? Because I'm really muddled today after making that 40 minute video and it not <laughs> working out. Ah, oh, technology, I just stick to this. The problem with the webcam one is um, sometimes the, the audio gets out of sync and I have to use handbrake. And so I was trying to avoid having to use handbrake, but instead I lost a whole video to it. So, well, I learned something today, didn't I? And uh, that's what's happening right now with the whole DID specialist thing. I'm just, I can't believe it. Anyway, catch you later.